Welcome back to Pole Barn Garage, where today I've bought a car I've been after for quite a while. 1982 Collector's Edition Corvette. Now, if you know me, I sold my last Corvette last summer. I socked the money away, pinched a few more pennies, and got the car I've really been after right here. They made just over 6,200 of these cars, and this is a very unique car. Turbine style wheels. They have bronze T-tops on them, the special decal package. And it's the only C3 Corvette with an opening back window. Special interior, and they're all fully loaded. This one, I think, this one even has, yes it does, it has the optional CB radio. This one's in good shape. I'd call it daily driver condition. It shows a little bit of wear and tear, but that's stuff we can handle and we'll take care of in this video. We show 115,000 on the clock. It's definitely not 15,000. And under the hood, it's a Crossfire Injected 350. If it wasn't for the Crossfire part of that, this would be all right. Every one of these cars is a 700R4 overdrive. Every one of them is a limited slip rear end. Looks like we got new dual exhaust on this. Now it does run and drive, but it needs a little bit of help under here. And we have to make it about 200 miles home. Let's do a little maintenance, bud. Okay. First things first, I drove this thing around the block and uh, the brakes are really soft and we're definitely gonna have to rebuild them for now. Let's just try to top off the fluid. We, uh, we just won't use them very much on the way home. I haven't peeked under here, but we should probably take a look inside the reservoir. I'm sure it's low. The pistons on these are notorious for leaking inside the calipers. They have a lip seal in them, so the lip seal leaks. The way to fix them is to o-ring them, which we will do. And these are now fixed. Yeah, JD? Yep. They're brand new again. This alternator is very loose. See that? See how much that's moving? The belt's loose. Let's just throw a wrench on that and uh, we'll try to loosen, tighten that up. And get a little less wiggly here. Hopefully we don't break it off. That would be nice. There. A little bit better. Yeah, it's a little better. Feels like it's supposed to have another. Yeah. Unless it's problem here actually is is that the uh, the alternator is actually too narrow or it's supposed to have another shim right there uh, there's a gap there so let me pull this bolt out and just put a washer in between there and that'll snug this up look how much play is in that freaking bracket there. let's just put a washer in it shim it so it's at least as tight uh, I only have one washer so we're gonna make another one out of this it's copper, that means it'll hold up a long time, right? Uh-huh, yeah. See that there? That's a bushing. And that bushing's just worn out. Pull that back. Just slip. Probably just this. Don't you think? Yeah. That should work. Yeah, that should work. It's that damn bushing, but it is a lot better. I think it'll be okay to drive home. Let's fire it up, and we're gonna kinda it just didn't sound right to me. You'll see. I hear something. I'm not really sure what it is. We got some sort of vacuum leak. Not really sure where. Ah, garbage. Let's give everything a once over. That's pretty much all we can do. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is cool. There. What the hell is that? I don't know. This must be an idle air control solenoid. These two. Right here. Yep. That taped together wire. I think. That can't be a coincidence. Yeah, that's it. What happens if I unplug it? It doesn't like that. Don't do that. All right. Take them apart and see. Yeah, see if we got a bad connection. Yeah. Because it's probably just barely touching. I pulled this apart. Nothing was taped together on it, but I mean, it could have been pure coincidence, I guess. But the only thing I noticed when I snapped this in, it doesn't. Oh, it snapped twice. That oh, time, maybe it just wasn't in all the way. Yeah, well, yeah, because when I was wiggling that, it was changed. It was making yeah. it run better. So maybe go, see go fire does. it up and see. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely got a foul plug or something. I'm like a 
like a caveman with a computer right now. I mean, I don't know anything about this stuff. I think that injector's sticking. It's been off the road a couple of years. That left bank is running super rich. Let's, uh, let's smoke out the neighborhood. Put the rest of the tank. We will complete the tune-up. Ah, fixed. It's full, but it's it's brown. 700 R4. I think everybody knows that 115,000 miles, you're past the expiration date. Corvettes are made out of fiberglass. Fiberglass burns. I've learned this the hard way. Carry a fire extinguisher. Well, I think we're pretty much set to go. Uh, I'm gonna be riding this. Uh, I, I get lonely, so I got Margaret here, my new friend. <laughs> Old boy that had this car, he passed away a little while ago. And uh, so one, we gotta give this car a real good home and we're gonna take good care of it. Two, he had kind of an eclectic uh, collection. Now buckle up, Margaret. Yes, yes, let me buckle up, yes. She's buckled uh, up. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for doing that. I mean, I don't want her to break her neck. I tried to start it to leave, and uh, battery's dead. But we did have the doors open for quite a while. I don't think that's why. So we need to uh, make sure the alternator's charging once we get it fired up again. It is charging. I don't know, I guess the dome light killed it? Something to watch for, that's for sure. I guess this thing doesn't want to start, but hey, I got a good burger out of the deal. Well, it's fixed. It's healed. All right, well, let's get on the highway. Be good to me, car. I'll be good to you, I promise. Maybe. It does feel good to be back in a vet, I gotta tell you that. Man, there's just nothing like it. Definitely got a hard pull to the right, but I think I can live with it. Okay, me and this sun visor, we're not gonna get along very, come on, just stay. There we go. No. You son of a bitch, let's try it for the air conditioning, huh? They said it worked. It smells like antifreeze, so that's, new balances now. I gotta say, that's a new one for me. 
Most of my junk doesn't have that light. We gotta fuel up the cruise ship here, you know, but, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, God. I mean, just look at that. Is that not a majestic beast? Anyway, I'm pretty sure I don't really have any, uh, you know, brakes. Uh, I think I have one. Let's, let's look at the fluid. Fold up here to be closer to the tools. I'm pretty sure that's not coming from this. I don't know. It looks okay. With this wizardry that's going on in here. Nobody really knows. Well, we're not losing any brake fluid, so that's a good sign. Or at least we're not losing a, a lot of brake fluid. That, I should say that. That was the luxury liner. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's probably a lot better than me, huh? I think those tires are pretty square. They're not quite round anymore. Maybe octagons. They're close, not quite. Yeah, I know. Yeah, lucky you. Margaret, are you ready to go? Yes, yes I am. Sports car. This is this is America's axe in the fight of sports car dominance. Except for it's less expensive, more accessible, more powerful, and better in every way. A Porsche or even a Jag can't hold a candle to a Corvette. Shut this car up! Let me out here! Up and smoothed out. I think the tires are maybe 
semi-circular at the moment. Let's get her home. But we're not done after that. We do more than just drive them home. We gotta fix it. All right, Margaret. Come on. We're home. All right. Easy. Just relax. Well, the vet is home, of course, and I've got it in the shop here. I haven't done anything yet, except for uh, get my fancy Paisley fender cover here. Where we're gonna start is with brakes. Uh, I have a lot of stuff for this car already. I've been kind of stockpiling over the last week, because uh, this is a car I really care about and I want it to be nice. That said, we gotta make it mechanically better. Uh, I have been driving it a little bit. I think I've put about 300 miles on it total since we drove it home, and it's done fairly well. It kind of runs like crap, but it seems to be maybe getting better. I've got all new upholstery to put in this thing, and then maybe we'll throw away that crossfire injection by the end of this video. So anyway, we're going to jack this thing up. However, there is a certain procedure to jacking these cars up. Because they are so well made, and by that I mean they're not well made at all, don't jack one of these cars up unless you have the hatch open, the hood open, a drawer at least cracked like this because the car flexes and you should also pop the t-tops just pop the latch when you jack it up otherwise because the car could flex so much they will break and these are incredibly expensive c3 vet is a full frame car you can either go under the frame here I might be able to reach the cross member through the front. My old vet, I wasn't able to get under it in the front because I had an air dam on it. Ugh. The rear wheels are laid out real bad when it's jacked up. That's because this has independent rear suspension. Uh, each wheel has a drive shaft on it, basically. They're half shafts, and the third member, the pumpkin, is mounted to the frame of the car rigidly. So the wheels move independently. We got some pretty good play in this one. And fortunately, I think that's probably a wheel bearing. Uh, we're gonna have to look into it. It's very likely that it is the rear hub bearing here. Those are very hard to do and very expensive. It's a bearing play in the front of this one. These are Kelsey Hayes turbine wheels. And uh, fun fact, these are worth more than my life. Even the center caps are very, very expensive. We do not want to break these. That would upset me a lot. Oh my God, it has a locking lug nut. I hope that's in the car. Oh, there it is. Oh, thank God. What the hell is this? Oh, that's for the car alarm. Look at the wood grain on that. That's, uh, that's not for many time in this century, that's for sure. I made the mistake of opening this door and it doesn't shut anymore. That's what I'm talking about. If I would have not cracked that door, it would have bound itself up and, you know, potentially cracked it or at least scratched the paint or something. Let's get this out of here and reveal a really bad rotor. Yikes. I don't think this thing has any pads left. That's probably why the freaking brakes don't work. Oh, I did not buy rotors. Let me see if I can get them. Well, I got new rotors coming. But uh, might as well leave that alone for now. So here's the thing. This is a reman caliper. And they are notorious for leaking. I've been here before. I've done it before. And sometimes the remands work okay. But most of the time they leak. So the way you fix that, you get an O-ring kit. What this does is replace that lip seal with this O-ringed piston. And these don't leak. You do this, you're good. I only ordered enough of the uh, O-ring conversions to do the rear brakes, so let's go ahead and just do the rears for now. And uh, the fronts will be here tomorrow. Top Flight Automotive is located pretty close to me, so should get them pretty quick. Well, I'm extra dumb and realize that it is 50 bucks for an O-ring kit for each caliper. So it's $200 for all of them. I should have just bought O-ringed calipers. Why did I just do that? This is cheaper. I'm saving a couple hundred dollars, so. Let's separate the caliper into its two halves here. The only things in here are this little O-ring here. This little guy here is what lets the fluid travel between both calipers. It's also why they're such a pain in the ass to uh, bleed. But these are very similar to that Thunderbirds calipers we just did. Not the same, but they are very similar. Little screwdriver here. Pop that lip seal out. See, it's not an O-ring. They don't cover 100% of the piston like an O-ring does. It's already lubed in there. 
so we should just be able to pop our new ones in. You can see how much more surface area the o-ring has over this lip seal. These lip seals, I just know the last time I did one of these, every caliper on the car leaked except for one until I put these in. We'll just install that and we're gonna have to tap that seal down into place. I'm gonna use a non-marring hammer to do that and just tap it down into its seat and you're done. You actually don't use the spring behind the piston with these o-ring calipers and that is a much better designed caliper now. You can tell when they leak because they get all covered in crap but yeah it is. That's not just brake dust, that's brake fluid. It's got a uh, antique hose on it. In fact it has a date on it. Uh, yeah that's a factory one. It says 1981 on it. Being independent rear suspension, we have two rear brake hoses, and those look very old and dry. One time in my 75 vet, it was on fire on the side of a highway in Oklahoma because one of those hoses collapsed and the caliper stuck. Brake fluid is corrosive, and brake fluid also attracts water, and that makes it very likely that every single Hose, fitting, line, everything is going to fight you tooth and nail. So, to prevent that, give them a soak first. Am I going to have to replace every brake line in this car? Oh, got it. Sometimes you just got to snag them, grab them while you can, you know what I mean? I'm going to go ahead and try to get all the brakes disassembled tonight. And we're ready to rock once we get our parts, hopefully tomorrow. These are convertible calipers, and uh, that's because they're open on top. You don't have to remove the caliper to change the pads. Remind me to get some bearing grease tomorrow. I am out. Calipers are held on big old 5 8 head bolts. There's one of those, and we can definitely tell that those lip seals have been leaking. Look how nasty and full of grime this thing is in there. I guarantee those are leaking. They're not like physically pouring fluid out or anything. It's just they're seeping and you're not able to get that full brake pressure you need. I'm gonna try to do everything and leave the master cylinder alone on this car because it looks decent and uh, I've had such a bad run of the parts store master cylinders. I'd almost rather just try to run this and see what happens. Let's take a peek at what our bearings look like in here. Definitely need packed. They are rusty. Oh yeah, the inner bearing stayed behind. That's not a good sign. This one's frozen. How about you? Are you gonna come off of there or are you gonna fight? No. Yeah. Not too bad. Look at all that rust. They might be okay. Let's clean them up and, and see what they look like, I guess. It's weird that the wheel seal actually looks totally fine. It's like it just didn't hold in there. I figured out that Super Clean is really good at eating grease. That's uh, exactly what it says on the bottle. You soak your bearings in the stuff, it'll just clean them for you. <laughs> it's really good. So on this caliper here is a prime example of what I'm talking about. See the wetness right there? That's not grease, that's brake fluid. Leaky, leaky, leaky. More of the same over here. Rust. Bearing looks okay though. I think I think a good simple repack and uh, just clean them up, repack them. Now here's the bearings out of this side. They cleaned up real nice. They still seem to be perfectly serviceable. I probably spent as much on the can of brake clean I used to flush them out as I would have on at least one bearing, but these are good ones. They're Timken made in USA and you know, I'd, I'd rather use these than new ones. Yeah, and the other side's been soaking in the super clean. It gets that grease nice and soft. Flush it out with some brake clean and you're good to go. Well, I got this brake line off, but it took a little violence. We'll have to do the same here. Uh, just a little bit of fiery violence. Hmm. We may not get lucky on this one. That didn't end well. So I guess we're gonna make at least one brake line. These rear calipers are basically the same as the front calipers, but they're just a lot harder to remove. I can't get this top bolt. There's not enough leverage. So yeah, I'm gonna use a jack, and that's not smart, and uh, don't do that. No, uh, don't jack the car up. Don't jack the exhaust up. Break the bolt free. Just break the bolt free. Oh, I think it went. Yep. 
Yeah. Alright, did that actually work? There's no way. I just picked up the entire car with this. Oh, holy shit. That worked. <laughs> that one's dry as a bone, and not in a good way. I don't think that one's been working in a minute. These old rotors off of here. Yep, and there's your little brake drum in here. That's your park brake. A lot of modern cars do the same thing, but basically the inside of this thing is a is your drum, and then that's your shoes, and everything is right here. And uh, that's good to go forever now. It says Delco on it. I don't think it's ever been used. Before you ever put new rotors on, at least just give them a rinse with some brake clean, because they have packing oil on them. And you don't want that on your new pads. Pretty simple. I can't put any calipers on yet. Let's go ahead and get the bearings packed on the front, reassemble that. Just do as much as we can while we wait for parts. Well, I guess the new rotors don't come with the hub anymore. Maybe you try this. Uh, huh. Okay, quick Google search tells me that these are actually rivets holding the hub to the rotor. And it's after I put this in my 20 ton press and it didn't remove it. Weird. So we just have to drill the heads off of these and then it'll come out. We unfortunately murdered my drill press building the 4x4 van. So I'm going to have to use a hand drill. That's alright because you guys have sent me a like lifetime supply of drill bits. So I'm going to use some of them right now. That's one out of ten total. Oh my god. I'm gonna be here a while. 75 years later. Okay, well I think I got all five heads drilled off of there. Let's whack it and see what happens. There it goes. I guess we'll have to grind off those rivets and get that flush again. So we'll go ahead and mount this hub up. I bought a big tub of grease this time. Packing with some fresh high temp grease. I go real tight with them, get them kind of squeezed in there. Then I back them off and we're just gonna tighten to the first hole we can get to for the cotter key. Here I go, struggling to find the hole again. And there we go. Boom. A new rotor. It only took like 45 minutes to do that. <laughs> oh, our Corvettes are so great. These rubber hoses are a lot easier to do than the earlier cars. You just thread right in to a little brass block in there. That's a major improvement for sure. Look at all the fluid coming out of that side of the hose. And there was very little coming out of the cut end. I put on the one caliper that I can, and uh, I'll go ahead and load it with some Wagner Thermo Quiet pads here. You guys haven't seen me put good stuff in a car before, so maybe this, you know, speaks to, you know, how I feel about Corvettes. Even though I kind of hate them, I really like them. I'll probably have to take a break from the brakes. <laughs> Get it? I have new seat covers. Uh, I wouldn't mind recovering these seats and cleaning them up a bit. So let's do that. Yeah, I had to spend some bucks on seat covers for this thing. And I wouldn't even really have bothered if somebody hadn't have put this freaking block leather insert in here. And it's it's supposed to look like the door panel. And uh, yeah, that's that's awful. Ah, don't weigh much. Good, I found 1967, and then a couple of newer ones. 75 cents back in my pocket. <laughs> I'm kind of a baller. Now naturally this seat bolts in from the bottom, you see, because of quality. Uh, it's the intense, rigorous amounts of quality in the C3 Corvette. It's also a power seat, that might be why. Alright, get this up, and then I gotta get under it. How do I unhook it? I don't know. Uh, this one's a lot heavier. Oh boy, it's kind of fat. We got our new seat covers out here sitting out and warm and uh, these were <laughs> unbelievably expensive collector's edition only seat covers and they are genuine leather handmade along with the door panels I got too uh, <laughs> like $800 so don't judge me too much but I think you gotta have it right I mean there's no other way I got some hog ring pliers let's go tear those seats down then we'll bring them in the house and cover them. Probably just take off these covers and you should be able to unbolt the hinge somehow. I don't think there's a too much to it. Get all these fake chrome nuts out of here. They're not actually threaded onto anything. They just pop onto these studs to hold the covers on. And boom. Two halves. Now I think 
these seats just pop into this bucket somehow. Oh. Like that. There we go. Like that. There they go. Yep. Oh, look at that. 28th week of 1981. I got distracted. It's been a couple of days. Anyway, let's cover these seats. Ever since I got that Corvette, though, it just seems like something's changed. I'm not going to go real in-depth into this. I've covered plenty of seats on the channel, if you're interested, and a little more how-to on how to do it. But basically, I'm going to cut all these old hog rings out, strip the old leather off. Looks like somebody's put an extra piece of foam in here to help brace it up. We have to cut the bolsters free. That's what all these little, where they tuck in here. Those are also hog ringed. This thing's been repaired a couple of times. Not the same way I would. So you can see down in the split in the foam here, that's where the bolsters hog ring to the uh, back side here. So I'm gonna have to cut those out. We also have to put those back in. They have to go in in the exact spot. Otherwise, this seat won't have that cool look to it, you know, and that's very important. Welcome to the point of no return. It did say when I bought the $800 seat covers, strongly recommend you buy new seat foam. And I didn't because it was expensive. Your very nice $800 made USA seat covers, while nicer, arguably even heavier than the originals, they still don't come with the wire bales you need to make the bolsters. It's been a day, because I got distracted, again. This one's coming along okay, JD's stripping the cover off of that. The butts here are a little more intense. They got multiple bolsters just tucked down in there. Uh, I just have some wrinkles here. I'm gonna take a heat gun, try to work them out a bit. The seat didn't have any wires in the sides of it to help tie it to it. And I'm afraid this fabric is a little bit thin to hog ring to, so got some metal coat hangers here. And I'll just slide some of these up in there. Just make a little snip in it right here. Yep, yep. yep. All right, now we got something rigid. We can put a hog ring around and get to the frame of the seat right there. Well, there we go. We've got them in the buckets, and it's pretty wrinkly. I think it'll, you know, as it gets worn in, it'll help. Uh, even if it doesn't, though, I don't know. It's about the best I could do. They needed new foams, is what they needed, but I. Uh, after spending as much as I have on the interior of this thing, we could go down, we could do that later or something. <laughs> well, I got some new hinge covers here for the sides of the seat because they were relatively cheap. And we're gonna have to come back in and, and just kind of dust all this up with some dye. But a can of dye in this collector's edition only color was $50 for a spray can. I'm gonna hold off for right now. <laughs> I just realized I got a four piece set of hinge covers. Uh, each seat takes four pieces. So what I'm gonna do is use the outer ones, I'll use the new ones that are the correct color, and then the inner ones will use the old ones that are gray and nasty looking, because you don't see those anyway. Well, it has been long enough that our, all of our brake parts arrived, so we went ahead and converted all the other calipers to O-ring type. I made a brake line here to replace this one that we broke. Let's go ahead and finish the interior. What do you think, Jay? Yeah. And then we'll do the brakes. Maybe we do the thing where we need to be clean and then we'll get all nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and yank off the old door panels. These are so cracked and sun faded. I, I didn't see any real way to fix them. I will not get rid of them because the new ones were... It's, I spent $850 on two door panels, okay? Just look, look, I have problems. I like vets. It's kind of a disease at this point. So it is what it is, okay? I'm not gonna justify myself to you, okay? Anyway, let's pull these off carefully and put on our new ones carefully. Removing our special collector's edition. There's <laughs> a door panel here. Chortle, chortle, chortle. <laughs> I guess this is just held in with like three screws and the armrest, apparently. You gotta unplug the lock in here. I mean, look at the quality there. Nothing actually holds them in. Just you bend some tabs over them. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> then, yes, this is the kind of quality you can expect out of your collector's Corvette. <laughs> I really went whole hog here. I got this uh, vapor and sound deadener here. I feel like I might be in over my head here. Just a little. I didn't realize that, you know, for a $500 door panel, if they don't cut the holes for you, 
you have to cut the holes in the $500 door panel. Uh, and then duct tape. Why, why is there duct tape on my $500 door panel? The holes back here are bigger than, bigger than what you need to cut out. What? Why would they do that? On the original, the whole inner part there for the lock is cut out. I'll go a little bit smaller than it. I just cut through a $500 door panel. I don't like this at all. Oh, uh, God. Will it fit yet? No. <laughs> Right, now we gotta cut through this, make this hole here. That's for the door lock rod. And that's ruined now, all right, yeah. I just realized that they don't even have the holes drilled for the mounting screws. This is where one of the screws goes. And there's not a, there's nothing here to go off of. They're just self-tapping screws from the factory. So wherever the door panel landed, they just, you know, shot it down. All right, well, wherever this lands, that's where a screw's going. Okay. <laughs> Snap down on the top, I guess. It's taking me like 30 minutes to get two screws into this armrest. And I'm trying to fish for the front screw here. See, the thing is, though, this armrest is flexible. It moves. You can't just, I don't know. I don't know what they expect here. Also, that black foam we put in there has made this even harder, so we're not gonna put in the other one. I've had enough of this. I'm shooting drywall screws into it. Ah. Uh, see, that sucked it right down because it didn't fit right. Now, I was able to use the original mounting holes in the back, but in the front, nowhere near it. This, nowhere near it. I, I don't... I don't know why. Everything else lined up okay. We just have to do it again. Yeah. Somebody else already shot a drywall screw in? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, so this side wasn't near as bad. And it's not perfect. And the seats aren't perfect. But, you know, I'm not an upholstery shop. But what I am is free. So, boom. Uh, let's give it a vacuum real quick. I'm gonna ditch this steering wheel because it's awful and I don't really like them anyway. Collector's edition or no. Also, it's been hot glued on. Um, it's typical Corvette owner stuff here. That might make getting this off a little interesting. What in the hell have they done to this? I don't... <laughs> Some good stuff, whatever they used. Yeah. Try to get to the screws here. This is the actual part that holds the horn button on. I do think we need to save it. I've always liked the older wheel better. This is from a 74. And I just like a thinner wheel that actually has finger grips on it. So what those two screws do is let you turn this in the middle, which does the tilt telescope. Lets the wheel move in and out. was upside down so put it on like that and I got the matching horn button for the earlier wheel it's just a lot better looking well it just snapped in there something to do with all that silicone they've put literally everywhere there we go that's a major improvement I like that that feels like a sports car. Before I put the seats in, I got the all-important cup holder to install. You gotta have one of these in your bed, you know? This is a 3D printed one. It was 20 bucks on eBay. Oh, the seats aren't perfect, but they're a lot better. So let's go ahead and install those. I gotta plug it in, of course. I get some reproduction vinyl floor mats with the cross flags in them. These were surprisingly cheap. They were only like 40 bucks. I'm guessing that's the driver's side. You wanna to try to bleed brakes, bud? Yeah. I, I Let's try to use this old master cylinder. I don't think it's that old. It's probably better than the O'Reilly one, I'm gonna guess. So uh, just pump them up for starters. Okay, do we hold it? Yeah. Hold it. Ooh. I think we got some kind of rear brakes going. Let's see if we can get some fronts out of her. Well, that experiment ended in utter failure. Uh, we bled all the brakes. They're working, but the pedal feel is terrible, which is 
It's the master cylinder is probably bad. Uh, let's go ahead and pop it off of there, take a look at it first. Then we'll have to bench bleed it and re-bleed all the brakes. Corvette master cylinders are probably the easiest part of the whole brake system. It's pretty easy to get to right here in front of you. And it looks like this stuff's been replaced before, but unfortunately with a Corvette, that could have been at any point in the last five to 50 years, and the owner would have no idea which. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. Let me hit it a couple times in a vise. Okay. It feels all right. I don't see anything wrong with this master cylinder. We just must have some air left in the line somewhere. And it looks like brand new in the bore. So we just rebled the brakes and must have got the air out of them. Feel good. I think they feel fine, bud. Yeah. No leaks? No leaks. We're good. Yeah, I think it feels fine. So I saw this and immediately got terrified. Look at this like knot tied in the cable holding the hood release cable together. Do you know how hard it is to open the hood on one of these if that breaks? It is like cut the hood off hard. So I bought a new cable. We should go ahead and change that now, I'm thinking. So this is assembled with, with incredibly tiny, delicate little cotter keys and pins. I'm gonna take this off here, fish this whole thing out of here. What is this thing? gonna be optional when I throw this fuel injection away. I can tell you that much. Let's make sure we got the same thing here. So as long as they're the same length, this plate here, right here, that's how you adjust them is by picking one of these holes and we can see the hole that it was in before and it worked perfectly fine. So we'll just put it back in that same hole. It's pretty good. Do you wanna? Latch it. Uh, okay, go pull it. Nice, nice, it works. We're good. Got some new tires mounted up on my collector's edition wheels here. Just some Hercules raised white letters. PriorityTire.com, I think they were 560 bucks for all four. Free shipping and 5% off just for being a member. JD, these wheels are only like $4,000, okay? okay? And the center caps are priceless. Okay. Uh, you know, so no pressure, you'll all be right. fine. Don't break it! I'm not gonna break it. I think this thing needs a new frame. There. That's right, even Corvettes aren't safe. I don't know if you guys noticed this earlier, but uh, this whole quarter panel is falling off of this. And that's because it's such a well-built car, the Corvette is. So I'm gonna shoot a self-tapper into it, inside here. There, <laughs> much better. Made much easier because the car is fiberglass. <laughs> don't break. I hope that door shuts after we do this. <laughs> Perfect. <Okay. laughs> nice. Now with it back on the ground, it'll be a lot easier to throw all of this away. We'll do that tomorrow. Crossfire injection is notoriously awful, and this is no exception. Uh, I mean, it just ran really poorly on our way home. We're gonna throw it away and put a carburetor on it, and that's gonna work a lot better. We just did this two videos ago. I'm not gonna go crazy into it. Let's just get to ripping this crap off, Jake. Yes. All right. Very, very clean inside. Definitely looks like a 100,000 mile motor to me. Jay, you wanna get a rag and mop up the coolant that's in there? Yeah. And somebody's been here before because the china walls have been removed, but that's fine by me. Peel that off, clean this gasket surface off, get it ready to plop an intake on. And for the EGR stuff, I'm just gonna JB weld a couple of bolts into the little tubes here and here and uh, plug those off, it works fine. We should also take off these heat shield things here because they're gonna rattle around like crazy. Okay. They're annoying. Wait, this tube here doesn't even do anything. Here, we'll just eliminate it. Hell, I bet we, just pulling all that crap off and going to a carburetor, I bet that saves probably 50 pounds off the yeah. front of the car. And to taking off that smog pump helps. Yeah, that's worth something, lot. yeah. Time to do a, a proper smog delete here, you know. Great. 
common. And just take this and then just there you go. You know, smear it around here for aesthetic purposes. And yeah, I mean someday we'll probably put some headers on this thing and get rid of this, but for now this will work. So let's throw us a good carbureted intake on here. We want the Edelbrock EPS. It's kind of my go-to, uh, especially for Corvettes, because it's a lower profile than like your regular performer. And that fits under the hood pretty good on these. I've never had any trouble. Uh, but you need all the hood clearance you can get. These are made in the USA and they're under 200 bucks. I'm gonna use some right stuff on this one. This is good stuff here. We're gonna build up a big old china wall. Should have cut that nozzle bigger. That's better. Put a little bit of glue around the coolant passages, of course. Always. And that kind of helps hold your gasket in place. Put a glob in the corner. Like that. Because that's where they like to leak. And the, the drop. That. And something to remember with your shiny new intake, your middle four bolts there, they do go into oil. So just take a little RTV and put it around the threads. That'll seal off the oil, keep it from turning your brand new intake brown. Well, as of right now, we've managed to lose the distributor I bought for this. So let's put the carburetor on. Uh, I went with a Holley 600 Street Warrior here and did that for one specific reason, and that's that it was on their clearance as a return. And they sell returned carburetors pretty cheap on there. So I think that one was 300 bucks or so, brand new carburetor. I got a different kind of throttle cable bracket here. You know, this is one of those Amazon knockoff low car ones. As long as it fits down in there though, I think this would work pretty good. This won't work for the Holly. Hits the accelerator pump arm up there. So no, that was all for nothing. Okay, well, we found the distributor. It was, you know, right in front of us the whole time. I went with the uh, Chevy Performance one. Now, it's made by Proform, licensed by Chevrolet. And these are really good distributors out of the box. I mean, as far as just a generic HEI goes. I've never had an issue with them. Pretty sure they're assembled in the USA. See there, it's got a sticker on it that says Chevy. I mean, you know. It's pretty much legit. I made a mark on the wiper motor there. Should be something like in there. Ooh. All right, so that's too far. I'm gonna have to turn that pump. My mark's here, so we need to turn that pump counterclockwise just a little bit. Yep. Boom. That is right in line with my mark. Looks just like the pictures I took. No reason to roll it over on the top dead center. Not when you're as good at guessing as I am. I'm trying to rig up this bracket. I had to get another one of those El Cheapo ones. I really don't like these things, but there's not many other options. I used the TV bracket from that other kit, and that worked even better with this than the one it came with. Uh, gotta get this throttle linkage attached somehow. I'll have to go find a, something for that. We still gotta put a fuel pump on this. If you'll remember when I did my mom's Crossfire car, I took the AC compressor off and stuff and did it from up top. I think this one I might try to do from below. I gotta change the oil in it anyway. Let me finish up this linkage here and I'll get right back with you. Our TV cable now, the way you adjust these, supposedly, is you push this button, then you floor it, and that's supposed to give you a 100, that's supposed to be right. Push the button, floor it. Pulled it out just a hair. It feels pretty good. I bet that's close. This transmission didn't feel the best anyway when we were driving at home. This just needs to get me by for a little while. I'd love to go TKO 5 speed in this thing at some point. Uh, a vet just isn't right without a stick. I guess I gotta hook this choke up here. Let me go ahead and finish this and then we'll move to the fuel pump because that's gonna be kind of crappy. I just turned the key on to check for power on something for the choke and the fuel pump is still working in this. Uh, I don't know why. I thought that got a signal from the ignition. Well, I guess I didn't unplug it, but I know mom's car, when I unhooked all that stuff, it didn't run. And I don't think that fuel pump will run unless it has power to the ignition. Let me try this. Pull that module off. Yeah, okay. God dang. Settle down. Kind of tempting to me to put a fuel pressure regulator on it, but I don't know. Carburetors really don't like electric fuel pumps. 
I'd rather run a good mechanical any day, which is what I did. I'm not messing around with that Chinese crap anymore. I bought a made in USA Edelbrock unit right here. These are supposed to be pretty damn good, so we'll find out. So whatever this wire is, no voltage with the key off. Turn the key on. And voltage. Also, people, this is an auto ranging meter. It's what I do, man. I, people say, oh, you got that thing on AC. It's auto ranging, automatic. It's a fluke. So, you know, it, it automatically detects DC current. <laughs> I'm gonna dig these ground wires out. I don't know if they do anything, but probably better safe than sorry on that. Hook this random wire up to the choke here so we have a choke and we'll be good to go. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the episode where I rip out miles of useless garbage. And goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye. And you might wonder, Dalton, why wouldn't you just save that in case you ever wanted to put that fuel injection back? And to that I would say, come on man, get real. You know, honestly, if I was planning on selling the car or anything like that, I would keep it. Uh, because it probably does help the value of the car being a collector's edition. But, I don't have any intention of selling it, you know. And as long as I get my years of enjoyment out of it, that more than covers the loss in value. Then we caught a bit of a lucky break. You can access fuel pump block off plate right in here. Now it's going to be tight, it's definitely not going to be any fun, but uh, I think it's better than pulling apart all that crap up top to do it. Probably change the oil too, that looks like a Walmart oil filter. The amount of space under here is less than ideal. I might be stepping over a dollar to pick up a dime, so to speak, by doing it this way, but I'm committed now, by God. Uh, there's the, that's the block off plate. So we're about 25% done with this job. I don't know about you guys, sometimes I gotta tell myself that, like, hey, I'm a quarter of the way done, I'm halfway done. Otherwise, I fall into a deep pit of despair every time I touch vehicles. Here's a Chevy small block mounting plate here. It's chrome, so it's guaranteed to leak. And an ARP push rod, because they're made in the USA, good quality stuff there, uh, unlike this. So I'm gonna put a little right stuff on here, glue the gasket to it, put the push rod in, bolt that on, We'll be ready to accept a fuel pump. Well, I had to re-clock this pump. It was facing uh, right into the frame. And I think, I think this should get us pretty close here. You just take out these screws here and you just turn it wherever you want it. It's pretty easy. Okay, so that took way longer than it should have. I mean, my God, I had to put a little elbow on there to make it fit. I hope it works out. It's not good. There's just, it's so tight. That pump would be great in pretty much anything other than a Corvette. You know, funny thing about a C3, it's actually kind of the first mid-engine Corvette. The C2 also. The uh, engine is behind the front wheels. That's good enough for mid-engine for me. It also means that the oil drain plug is way back here. Oil filter off. It's an STP actually, not Walmart, so I guess that's all right. It's very clean oil, but it's full of fuel from those throttle bodies being so rich, washing everything down. I put a Wix unit on there. That's good to go for a while. Let this thing keep dripping and then we'll put some new oil in. What we're gonna use today is Valvoline VR1 and that's because it has all the zinc that a flat tappet cam engine needs. You'll always see me add a zinc additive to even Rotella because diesel oil only has primary ZDDP. And that's not correct for a flat tappet engine. For a flat tappet engine, you want secondary ZDDP. And I learned about this in an article that about a test that Amsoil did. Granted, you know, it's an oil company. Maybe it's a little biased. I don't think so, though, because they tested VR1 and it was adequate. You could run whatever you want, but I would say anything that you're going to beat on or is going to see some regular heavy use, just spend the extra six or seven bucks and get actual oil intended for flat tappet cams. Uh, I mean, by the time you add a zinc additive to any oil, hell, you're really not even saving any money. Let's see if my uh, professional guesswork on that distributor is right. Hang on, hang on. 12 degrees. Well, it still cranks, I'll take that. Okay, not quite 12 degrees. Hang on. I 
wish that damn choke would open. this thing keep running so it can burp the coolant out. But listen to that thing burp. Mwah. So much better. And uh, it didn't require any fancy computers or software or an astrological engineering degree. Here's your uh, software right here. Screwdriver. I think the fan clutch is going out or something. It's not that, but the fan's definitely hitting something. I don't know what. And that Freaking fuel pump is leaking. God damn it. Uh, I'm gonna have to take it back off. Or at least the bottom part. I didn't put anything on the threads, but I didn't know what to put on them. It's gas. I guess I could try some Teflon, but that's that elbow I had to put on there. Let me make sure it's not the hose or something stupid. Well, while I let this thing cool off so I can take a look at that fuel pump, Really hoping I can just unthread that fitting without taking it back off. We have one pretty major hurdle to clear here, and that's uh, getting the hood to shut. Crossfire cars have a special hood insert here, so on a normal car this would work just fine, but I don't think that'll clear. But we could try. And, well, damn, it's, it's a lot better than I thought it would be. It does shut. Does it open? Yeah. How bad does it hit? Not that bad. I think I'll just take this little thing off here. And that'll give us all the room we need. Hell, it's not that big of a deal. Get one of those open top air cleaners on there. Hell, the uh, cal induction will still work. Yeah, with that out of the way, I think we got plenty of room, honestly. We'll see if it rattles against it. I'm a big fan of anything that keeps me from having to cut a big hole in that. <laughs> Why is it doing that? Hung up real bad on the fast dial. Yeah, I need to lean that choke out quite a bit. That's all that was. I'll use some thread sealant on those fittings on the fuel pump, but I don't know how long we need to wait for it to dry. Gas, gas and oil, hydraulic system, air conditioning. So I think this stuff will work. Well, let's see. thing here we need to make sure our transmissions adjusted correctly so we may have to stop a couple of times
couple clicks. Something like that, maybe. That's a look. Everything look okay? Yeah, let me check. No leaks. We're good. Cool. skipping second. Yeah, maybe, it is. I maybe didn't feel it. looser will lo late make the shifts later? I don't know. I don't really know. I'm going to push this button and have JD just floor the car and see what it does. Go for it. Oh, wow. Okay. It pulled that cable all the way out. Yeah. And that's good, isn't it? Supposedly, that's how you adjust them. Uh, let's see what it does, I guess. All right. This road's so bad, I can't pick up speed. drive. Okay. It's running fantastic. So much better than it did before. See, I think it should kick down there. I think it needs to be tighter. Alright. It feels really good. The brakes feel great. Everything we've done is good. I just think this transmission's a slush box. I love this car, I can tell you that. Yeah, it's cool. thing's probably got 50 more horsepower. <laughs> Car wash owner got lucky today. I don't have something covered in boots and mold and stuff to bring here. But it does need a good rinse off. You know what the best part of a Corvette is, JD? What? It's the free shower you get every time you wash it. Although, I will say, this one's better than most of the ones I've been in. We got back here. Uh, that's why they didn't put those patches in most of them. But uh, the T-tops actually aren't bad. Yeah. Kind of surprising. These uh, 700 R4s are kind of typical for the governor weight sticking. And the only thing, the only snake oil I've ever poured in the transmission that did anything was Seafoam Transtune. As far as, you know, like freeing something up or making the transmission not just last like 10 more miles and then blow up. Uh, this stuff works pretty good. It's worth a shot. And this is one of those, like, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not like the goo that you pour in. But this might help free something up if there's a solenoid sticky or one of those weights is stuck or something. I don't know. I'm not a transmission guy at all. It starts easier than the Crossfire too. <laughs> it is so much, God, this thing's a blast. I think the Miracle Goo did something. <laughs> that felt good. It's repaired. We've completely, I overhauled the transmission in my spare time, guys. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Jesus. This thing's a handful. The vitals look good. Running uh, nice and cool. I put a 180 thermostat in it. Looks like it's hanging out around there. Good oil pressure, charging. Oh, that's oil temp. 
I just oh. realized it has an oil temperature gauge. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's, that's, really the, cool. oh, that's the... That's the water temperature. Yeah. Well, that's fine, too. I have a new set of spark plugs for this thing, but they look like brand new on the outside. And if you've ever done plugs in a C3, you know why I didn't do them. Uh, and I figured they probably had a couple fouled from that crossfire setup. They should clean up as we drive, and it feels like it's getting smoother as we keep going. Get a big plume of smoke. Oh boy. What is that? I don't know. Something's That's leaking. Transmission. Oh. I know I don't have that cable that far off. I don't think. Maybe it's just leaking from. Well, then it would have leaked before, though. Like I overfilled it when I dumped that stuff in, maybe? Maybe. It's shifting fine. I don't know where it's coming from. I actually think it's just the pan leaking. I don't. It's not the lines, and it's not up top. I don't think it's the vent tube, like a bad transmission would do. Somehow we've, like, blown the pan gasket out of it. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's kind of all I got. It's the only place I can see that it's, there's fluid coming out of it. There's not really anything else over here to leak. Governor housing, that's not leaking though. I mean, it's wet at the pan and below and then blowing back. And maybe just because we overfilled it. It's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Not the pouring out of it while it's running. I think I got on it and sloshed fluid to the back of the pan and dumped fluid out of it. I mean, that's, that's all I can figure. We'll take it nice and easy on the way home. No, well, I don't know. <laughs> it seems to be shifting fine. I mean, as fine as it ever has. I mean, I'm sure this transmission on it is on its way out, but that sure be a hell of a coincidence that it just dies, you know? Yeah. But it feels totally fine. Like, it doesn't feel like it's shifting weird or anything. It's not like my mom's vet. That one didn't feel right at all. This feels just like it did before. I don't, it's not pouring fluid out of it now. I mean, there ain't, look back there. No smoke. No, I think we're good. I, yeah, probably just eats a pan gasket, I guess. I, that's weird, but. Maybe it just does. It could. It made it home. It's fine, it doesn't seem to be leaking anything or doing anything weird. You know, if I have any friends at Borg Warner who want to get a hold of them about a uh, TK05 speed for this thing, you know, thank you. I, I, I'd listen. Well, it made it home, and it's not you can its guts out. Well, it is. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's right there. What? It was just leaking right there. Well, it's dripping, but you know. Well, oh yeah, it's not. That could be from before. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'll have to jack it up and look at it, but you know what? I'm out of time for this video. This is my new collector's edition Corvette. It's going to be around for a while, so uh, get used to it. I'm kind of a Corvette guy. Make sure you check out the merch at polebarmerch.com. And, uh, yeah, a uh, quick note. By the time you see this video, the week after, March 30th, we're going to be doing an enduro race at Electric City Speedway, Butler, Missouri. Uh, and I've got a car lined up. Casey's Customs is coming with me. Uh, we're going to have a whole crew of people trying to drive our cars to the track and back. So you'll see that video in a couple of weeks. But uh, if you can make it there to Electric City Speedway, March 30th for the 150 lap Enduro, uh, you know, feel free to say hi while you're there. So we'll see you guys next time on Pole Barn Garage. And uh, nothing, ever, nothing ever goes as planned, does it?